I am in beautiful Sherwood Forest, and you are in your dirty, filthy, grotty sitting rooms watching the television. It's halfway through the morning and most of you still haven't pulled the curtains. You're dressing your pyjamas, there's cereal bowls all over the floor. Why can't you eat your breakfast at the table like human beings? And don't play the computer when you're watching the television. It's very rude on the presenters. Instead, come with me and see the wonderful world of Sherwood. And take your finger out your nose. I'm a bit sad today. This is my last day filming on the third series of Maid Marian and Her Merry Men. This isn't really Sherwood. It's actually a little wood by the side of Porlock Hill in Devon. And just round the corner, there's what the BBC Design Department have built for us to be the village of Worksop. Come with me and I'll show you. Why don't you carry on? because they're filming just around the corner. But this is supposed to be the village of Worksop, which is the muddiest, filthiest, most disgusting village in the whole of Britain. And actually, there really is a real Worksop in real Nottinghamshire. And the people of Worksop... Oh, can you hear that? That means we're just about to start filming. The people of the real Worksop are really pleased that we're publicising the place because they think it uh, attracts tourism. I think they must have the balmiest tourist officer in the world. Action. Robin? Yeah? What's the difference between you and a total jerk? Um, I don't know. Neither do I. Is there anything I can say to cheer up? No. Is there a difference? Not even, uh, have this bag of silver? Yeah, that helps a bit, little Ron. Uh, That's marvellous, Wayne. Well, I am actually over here. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's leave these right now, shall we? Is that the That's a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. It's developed from the first series, I and mean, we're now just making the third series. Um, the first series, we, we were finding our way, we had new locations and new characters, and we didn't know quite how it would all work out, you know, and we were finding our way with the music and so on. Um, and in the second series, we decided that the music worked very well and we knew what the locations looked like, so therefore Tony could write more around those locations. And also with the characters, of course, he knew th how the actors played those characters and that he could therefore build on their strengths. Um, so everything gets de developed from series to series. We've now got more music in, in this series. We've got full choreographed dance numbers. I mean, you'll see Tony singing and dancing. Big as a mountain, round as to be. Super duper doopy, father bloopy. One of the great things about writing the series was that I could choose which part I wanted. It did cross my mind that I might like to be Robin Hood, but then quite honestly, I've always thought that Robin was a, a little bit of a wally. And I decided that what I'd like to do best was be the baddie. Uh, action. And after having played sweet little cute Baldrick for so long, it was wonderful to be so, so really so sarcastic so and vitriolic about other people Gary, and the sort of things that other people do without anyone crazy. having a go at me. Partridge is a spoonbill and a great crested grebe. How many times do I have to tell you Graham's attacker would have been this big with two legs and he'd have never flown in his life? Oh, an ostrich you mean. <laughs> um, I think one of the things I like about Marion most is that she's a very forceful character and uh, positive about everything and, and generally very optimistic as a person. She'll always try and find the good in any situation. Even when she gets things wrong, she salvages it. And uh, there's not that many characters on television 
played by by women that are very strong and um, and positive. So that's one of my favourite things about her. If ever that ball of fire should return and be seen speeding across the sky, we will remember this little girl and her contribution to science. And we will call that fireball Haley's Vomit! Yay! Have things gone wrong on the shoot? What's happened this year? Well, um, I think my biggest one is breaking my little toe. We had a, a scene in, in, in the village where it's very, very muddy. I had to run through the village and stop on a mark and deliver a line. And it was going downhill at that point. And I it's ran and ran and ran through the village and stopped and just went flying up in the air, flat on my back, didn't hurt my back, but as I hit the ground, I, I hit a big stone and smashed my toe in. And it was all caught on camera, and everybody stood around laughing and watching it. And I was sitting there going, oh, my toe. <laughs> and I thought I'd just bruised it, and I hadn't had broken it. So I'm still a bit hobbly about that one. Does that all look good? You may have wondered how, when we're doing slapstick, and the soldiers are flying all over the place. They don't actually hurt themselves and get clobbered. Well, we use the bouncy barrel, which, as you see, can't hurt anybody <laughs> at all. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Story about how we never ever get... Oh, no. Well, the deal was, you see, we never get any chairs. We have to sit in the mud. And this is primarily, Danny thought, after three years, right, we're all going to have a chair each, which is a brilliant idea. Thank you very much. Would you like to see the backs off? Of Show you see it. Right, everybody. Okay. Ready? Up. Ready? You and all. Ready? Oh, now. Okay. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> we do. on the phone Hello. now. Hello. Beyond the joke. Uh, it's just absolutely Who is the accident on this show? Philip Schofield would never stand for this, you know. No, he would actually. And yes. Philip's a personal friend of, of many of us here. Yes. Oh, yes, an actor's life for me, eh? Didn't yeah, that look 